Absolutely. And you, you touched on something that's interesting. And I think it's kind of on the mind of a lot of the, um, the divers coming up to the industry is uh, we live a more modest lifestyle. I mean, I think they look at us and see this, this, you know, almost fame and fortune, um, glamorous lifestyle. But it, the, the fact of the matter is, is to live this lifestyle, it's a harder dollar. You put a lot more time in, especially as an entrepreneur, there's not a nine to five. It's, it's 10 hours. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's 365 days a year. When I have a vacation day, I'm still responding to client messages. When I'm overseas, I'm hopping on Wi-Fi, you know, while I'm on a project trying to deal with other things that happen. I manage websites. I'll have a client who's like, oh, something happened to my website. And then I have to go in and, and fix it uh, remotely. There's also a physical toll. If you're sick, you're still working. <laughs> I'm fighting a sinus infection from my last trip. Um, so, you know, you have the whole like travel immune system thing that happens. Mm -hmm. um, it's an investment and we do it because we love it. Uh, it seems like, yeah, it's, it's a glamorous lifestyle. And I like to think, you know, we talked earlier on about conservation that I'm purposeful in the things that I introduce in my life. Uh, so most of my belongings are my equipment, you know, the, the rest of it, like, I don't know what people own, but I own my dive equipment. <laughs> I own my cameras. Uh, and then like I had a neighbor, I have a, this bucket I used to rinse my dive gear. I bought it from big lots 20 years ago. And it said like three 99 and it's a giant bucket. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And she had to borrow it cause they had no water in their house. Uh, so we filled up my bucket and she goes, Ooh, I want a bucket like this. Where can I get it? And I was like, well, I got it 20 years ago. She's like, you have something in your house from 20 years ago. I was like, I have older stuff than that. You know, <laughs> I get something so I don't have to keep getting new things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd say it's accumulative. Uh, it's not, and there's, there's sacrifices you make. I have another friend, uh, who she just wants to do everything in life. And when you want to do everything, you don't do as, as much deeply. Um, so like she wants to say, be an author, but she plays video games. And I'm like, well, I don't play video games. I don't watch TV. People are constantly asking me like, you know, so there are certain like recreational activities. My friends uh, are near and dear to me are few, you know, uh, over the years, like you have people that you talk with, but the social connections ch change. And like, I have friends like you or Alex and, you know, we don't get to connect. You know, it's not like we're there every day uh, as a tight friend group. We're part of a tribe, we're part of a community, uh, but it can feel very isolating at times uh, because you know, your friends over time, the ones that want to go to the party or the pub or just do whatever, you don't have time to be doing any of that. You know, you're going diving, you're prepping for your next dive, you're, you know, doing home repairs, you know, something broke, you're recocking a sink, you know, stuff, life happens, you know, the car needs maintenance too, <laughs> you know, I'm on my second vehicle for diving. <laughs> well, technically my third. <laughs> and the first two, they kind of yelled for help when they were done. Well, you put a lot of miles on those cars too. And, and some of the videos that I've seen of, uh, of your three, four day uh, trips in those where you pack, you know, 10 tanks and dive gear and three people and food and camping gear and everything else. It's pretty impressive, honestly. <laughs> but I get it completely. So you've got a series called Protected Waters. Can you talk to me about that? That's it's. I've seen the videos and I love them. Absolutely love them. So talk to us about that. Started uh, out of the 50 state journey uh, in talking with Alex over COVID, uh, really before COVID. She just knew I was doing this weird freshwater thing and cold water stuff. And her history as a photographer has largely been an exotic. I mean, we call it exotic, but if you think about it in Asia, that's their local waters. Um, but she's always working, say, in Asia or you know, the coral triangle or in some, you know, in the Philippines and like what we would consider exotic and uh, the most rich underwater tropical life possible. Whereas I've been humping it in sand filled quarries with toilets and, you know, artificial, um, uh, you know, exhibits, <laughs> things that uh, are meaningful to local divers here. Um, and, but I also had found like some of these natural resources, like the spires at Yellowstone. And uh, that inspired us to collaborate on our first film, which was Protected Waters Exploring Yellowstone, uh, to showcase the world's first uh, national park. 
And after Yellowstone was created, the world realized there was benefit in having national parks, both economically to governments uh, and to protecting these precious resources. And if you think about it, most things are economically driven. So if you're interested in protecting something, think about the economic benefits that happen from that protection to help persuade people on why we need to do it more than the conscientious, maybe we shouldn't just kill and ruin the whole world side of it. But it's true. Uh, but anyway, so we started with the first national park and uh, then we had plans to do Glacier, the second national park as our next video and COVID really happened. Um, so then we juked and we did the Laguna Madre, which was a hyper saline lagoon. So in this year's protected waters episode, we're also explaining what it means to be a protected water and what that means beyond a national park or a national sanctuary, like what are protected waters and what do those protections mean in local places? Because people don't realize the regulations are in place to protect commerce and industry as well. Uh, and I know fishing culture, some, some of the fishing culture in particular understands that if we over harvest, we're ruining our future crops. And some of it goes, well, it's going to be over harvested anyway, so we should take it out because our economy depends on it. Um, <clears throat> so there are different use, uses that are allowed of land and waters, depending on the level of protection it has. And we're going to explore some of that as we talk about the leopard shark migration in California. So it's a passion project. Uh, and of, we do hope to find a broadcasting home for it at some point. Now you won some awards for your Yellowstone one, didn't you? We did. We won some film awards uh, for that. Now, uh, how, would we, how would we go see these your protected water series? Where can we go to find the, the videos? They're on YouTube. Excellent. Excellent. I, I've seen them and I love them and I encourage everybody and I'll make sure to put a link to those in the uh, comment section of this as well. So, well, Jennifer, what do you see as the biggest challenge facing the dive industry in the coming years? People getting outdoors and loving the underwater life. That's one of the things I love about Avello is because it's fun and cool and it's easier to do. I think scuba diving has a perception that it's cumbersome and expensive and hard. And that's a barrier to entry for new divers and for growth in the industry. I would love for more people to be connected underwater. And I feel like as a population as a whole, we've become more digital and less... Um, less outdoors, although the numbers don't show that like in our national parks, you know, people are going for certain uses of outdoor facilities. I think people love to be connected to nature. I think it's important to our psyche and our health and our mental health and physical well-being as a species uh, to be outside. So I just, I'd love to see growth in the industry and see people um, rekindle their love uh, for either whatever subject in their interests you uh, personally i love you know the animals and the habitats and but you know wrecks caves like different environments have have their charms so whatever is near you or around you i'd love to see people get connected overcome their uncomfort with cold water too <laughs> absolutely there i you and i both are deep into cold water diving and and love it because there's so many different things you see. And I, I, people are always surprised when I tell them, they say, ask me what my favorite dive site is. And I say, Yellowstone Lake by far. I, I love Yellowstone. There's a special connection in the national park and diving that cold water. And, you know, and you and I both know you start out in June at 33 degrees and you eventually warm up to a brisk 50 degrees. Which so, is awesome. Oh, absolutely. You, you, you pray for those days. The 33 degrees definitely you know, you, an hour and a half at 33 degrees definitely wears on you. That's for sure. But it's amazing. There's, there's special connections. So I agree. Thank you. So can you share any exciting projects or initiatives that Dive Avello has in the works and how they're going to be benefiting the dive community as a whole? We're hoping to make diving accessible uh, for more people. We're hoping that people will find it a great entry point to rekindle their love for going underwater. You know, it's been a while since Jacques Cousteau brought everyone underwater uh, commercially uh, as a recreational industry. Uh, and we're hoping that Avello kind of reconnects people kind of like, um, you know, uh, snowboarding to skiing, you know. So we're hoping that the people really get into it and see that we're a welcoming, friendly, 
community of people who want to share our underwater experiences. Uh, right now, Avello is publicly available on Maui, so you can earn your specialty certification to learn how to dive the equipment mm -hmm. uh, as an existing diver. So you do need to be open water certified at this point to use the system. Uh, we see that as an impetus for people to learn scuba and then come learn Avello at this point in time. But we're opening a couple of more of our Avello dive centers this year. Uh, we hope to, we will, we will be announcing those at DEMA. So, and other partnerships. Uh, DEMA has sort of been where we tell people what our next steps are. And right now we're building all of the materials for that uh, dive show uh, to tell people. Uh, but right now it's, it's available on Maui, either on boat dives or shore dives. You know, you learn through Dive with Harmony, our first Avello Dive Center. And then you're off and running uh, in Maui with more locations to come. So I'd say the biggest thing at Avello right now is making it accessible to everybody and giving them more destinations where they can experience this system. Because the people who get on it then just get mad that they had to learn scuba. <laughs> they're, they're like, this is awesome. Uh, so they really just, uh, they want more. And we're hoping uh, to give them that this year. That's amazing. So what do you have in the works initiatives that here are coming up for Jennifer? Well, between Avello and Protected Waters and leading big fish expeditions, uh, those are kind of my big three. Uh, I certainly have my dreams that I'm working toward. Uh, and the way I'm hoping to get there is by telling meaningful stories that connect with people about our underwater habitats. Um, so that certainly leads me um, hopefully in, in a direction that people resonate with. I'm not a bucket lister, although the 50 state tour may have led people to believe, you know, just I've had so many like, are you going to do all of the provinces in Canada or, you know, all of Mexico or, you know, all the countries in the world? No, that's not the kind of bucket listing, but it is nice to be understood as somebody who celebrates the underwater world uh, through what I like to think of as really high end image making. That's fantastic. And I have met uh, other people along the along the way that have mentioned, hey, I, I found this book about diving all 50 states. I'm trying to do it, too. And I was like, I know that gal. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> you should absolutely do that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very exciting. You, you've got a lot on your plate already. So, you know, asking what more is out there. So how do we sign up for an expedition with Jennifer? I lead my expeditions, uh, my public expeditions through Big Fish Expeditions. So if you want to sign up for a trip, that's where I'm leading public trips. Uh, some of my other partnerships, like working with you uh, or Alex, those are kind of personal connections and I'm open to meaningful projects. Uh, but I am being more particular about where I'm going and what I'm doing because there is a limit to the time and energy to create quality work. So I did quit my column. I was doing a column for Scuba Diving Magazine uh, for three, four years. And I quit that because I was just, I was tired of hopping from weekend trip to weekend trip to weekend trip. So I'm trying to tell longer stories where I can be in a place for at least two weeks at a time. That's amazing. So the final piece is what advice would you give somebody interested in pursuing a career in, in photography underwater, videography, or marketing within the dive industry? Uh, become expert in photography or marketing or whatever aspect you want to bring to the underwater world, be a scuba diver, uh, and practice what you're doing. Don't give your work away for free, add value to your work. Uh, if you're sh wanting to get experience and show people what you're doing, show people what you want to show, not the work that they're asking you to do. Cause that doesn't always get you further. I mean, if I gave away my work for free, everyone would be like, could you come shoot on this boat or this boat or this boat? And then I can't pay bills and I can't stay in it and you're doing something else. I think that's key advice. We undervalue ourselves way too often. Don't give your, your work away for free. You've taken a long time to develop it and figure it out, charge it appropriate value. So you can, as you said, grow and continue to expand within that industry. So and it's if fantastic people advice. aren't wanting to buy your work the way it is, package it differently. So be that photography or videography or being an instructor, just keep learning and reinventing yourself. Keep at it.
Absolutely, keep at it, and and eventually, it's. It, I think most people don't realize the becoming portion. It doesn't. I'm quite sure that it uh, it took you a while to get from where you were at as a 14 year old diver to where you're at currently, and even your 50 state tour was five years. That's a commitment, and it, um, to get to a from point A to point B. So you have to take the time to get there as well. Not only just become an expert in it, but be patient with yourself. Celebrate the wins along the way. That is amazing. And I don't think we do that either nearly enough. Jennifer, you're, I, I always love talking to you and I, and I can actually talk to you for hours and hours and um, campfire uh, stories are one of my favorites. So thank you so much for taking the time with us today and uh, doing this and giving our audience this opportunity to meet you more closely. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I hope that people get something out of the presentation and that they fall in love with the underwater world in the same way that I know you and I and our colleagues do. Um, it's an obsession, you know, you don't need bad habits when you're a diver because diving is your habit. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.